Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to what I think is one of the most underrated .NET features ever and it has been since basically its launch and I think I know why and that feature is channels. Now, if you've never heard of channels, at its core it's just a way to move data around within your application in a very nice and efficient, very performant way that is also very versatile and it can be used in tons of places. Imagine that you need an in-memory queue in your application. If you're using Mediator, don't. You should be using Channels. If you're using in-memory, I don't know, Wolverine or something, don't. You should be using Channels. You should be using Channels for tons of things. So let me just quickly demonstrate how it works with an example. I have a simple web API here, and I'm going to say app.map get and create a simple send endpoint that we will use to basically send an in-memory message. And this can be used in many places. Let's say that someone signs up and then you wanna add the service that schedules the email to be pushed to verify that they signed up. Yeah, you can do it with a message queue, but if you have like a traditional monolith, you can use channels. If you have something that you wanna do in the background after an action for a user, you can use channels. And you don't have to wait or block anything. You can do all that asynchronously and in the background. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that until the 28th of February, we are offering our two C Sharp courses, Getting Started and Deep Dive, completely for free forever on Dome Train. Click a link in the description and just claim them, and they're yours to keep forever. So let's say that this API at its core now just returns results. Dot OK. So simple stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a processor class, and this processor will be basically a background service running in the background in our application. I'm going to create the simple default method, which is the execute async, and then I'm going to register it in dependency injection by saying services.addhosted service and then processor. If I do that and I just left it where it is, I can go here, for example, and I can say uh, while and then stopping token is cancellation requested. So while it is not cancellation requested, then let's say wait for a second and then simply print the date time dot UTC. Now, simple stuff. If I just run this API as it is, what's going to happen then in the background, you're going to see a message every second saying basically the current time in UTC. So we're going to leverage that. But let's say we want to pass a message from the send endpoint to the processor in a very efficient way. And for all that to happen asynchronously, so we don't have to wait for any of that work to finish while we just say, you know, OK, or return that a payment method was accepted, something was created and all that. What would you do? Well, you can use a channel. So like I said, channels are just effectively like in-memory queues. If you want to think of them that way, you can. But they can have multiple writers or multiple consumers or both. Or they can also be bounded, meaning that you can only have an amount of messages in the in-memory queue at the time. And if the queue is full, then you can apply some back pressure by waiting to push a new message into the queue and do some really fancy stuff. But the most basic thing I want to do is I'm just going to create a very simple class over here. I'm going to say public class and let's just say channel request. And this will be the DTO, the object that we will be sending into that channel. And I'm going to just have a string message and you know what, let's just turn it into a record. So I'm just going to have this simple record and I'm going to be pushing that into the queue, into the channel. Now to create a channel, all you need to do is use the channel class, which is in .NET, and then you can say create bounded, create unbounded, or create unbounded prioritize. All of these things can be used for many reasons. We're going to be focused on two of them, the create bounded and create unbounded. Bounded means it has a limit, so it has a fixed capacity, which means that you can keep pushing messages in, but if the channel is full, you have to wait before you can add more into it, or you can just reject the right if you can afford it. And unbounded means that there is no limit, but of course, then the limit becomes your memory, like with an array, like with a list, like with any data type, basically. So unbounded, as long as you're reading fast enough, will never be a problem. So let's just say that I want to create an unbounded that processes a channel request. Now, I'm not going to just leave it like this. What I'm going to say is build the services dot add singleton in this case. And I can say that I want to have a channel of type channel request. And then here I can provide the initializer. So just use this thing to create an unbounded channel. Now I can also pass configuration over here and I want to do that because I want to specify that in this scenario, I have 
a single writer. So only one thing can write into it at a time. And if you want to have many writers, you can do that. It's just for the demo over here. And I can also say single writer. By default, it is false. So anyone can write into it. I'm not going to touch it. And I can also specify allow synchronous continuation. And this means that if an operation is performed on a channel, uh, then it might be synchronously invoke whoever is subscribed to it. While if you say false, then it will be asynchronous. So I can just say allow synchronous continuation and I'm going to say false. And then when I'm consuming something, I'm just injecting the channel of type channel request and I'm just going to say channel here. So I can take that and I can turn this into async. And then here I can say channel.writer.write async and I'm going to just say that. And then all I have to do is pass the object and I'm going to say hello from and I'm just going to pass again the daytime. So daytime UTC now. But now this is in a message and I'm going to turn this into a wait. I'm going to just write into that channel and I can write as many times as I want. I'm just going to write one. And then in the processor, I want a way to read this. So what I'm going to say is private read only channel because we register it in the eye. We can resolve it here too. So channel request, I'm just going to say channel and inject it from the constructor. I'm going to sort these over here and then I'm going to remove this while loop. And all I'm going to say is while the channel and then reader and then wait to read async. So wait until there's time for you to read and pass down the stopping token or the cancellation token. So while this is true and you can read from it, then get the request as a wait channel reader and then read async. So that will read in a, again, a queue fashion, passing down that token. It's going to read the first thing it needs to read. And then I'm going to get that message again in the background without blocking the main thread. I'm also going to say, let's say, wait task dot delay to artificially create a bit of work that needs to happen. Just say for two seconds over here. And then I'm going to say uh, console dot write line request dot message. So we're just going to print the message we transferred from the main thing over here. And we can pass cancellation token as well here. Why not? And that is it. You just created an asynchronous queue processor for your application but it is extremely fast and extremely performant. It's way more performant than you doing the vast majority of any other data type. For example, if you use the buffer block to do the exact same thing, it will be 20 to 25 times slower than using a channel. So we're going to keep this here, just run this, and then I'm going to go on Insomnia and just zoom a bit in, and I'm going to call that send endpoint. So I'm going to call that, go back to the console. You see, I go to 200, but I didn't get this message immediately. You didn't have to wait. I got the response. I wrote into the channel and then something happened. And I can do this many times at the same time. But again, this processing in this case is happening one after the other. Those messages were processed and sent at the same time. That's why they all have the same second, but they were looped around. So effectively the channel, the queue had three messages waiting at the same time. And you could have multiple readers if you want to. But in this case, we just have one. So channels like this, especially unbounded channels, can allow you to queue an infinite amount, infinite amount, as much as your RAM, amount of messages into an in-memory queue and consume it from anywhere in your application, which is extremely useful because it's asynchronous. You don't have to wait. You don't have to deal with new task or task dot run or any of those dodgy things that can fail in mysterious ways. Just use channels. And if you use a bounded channel and you say, for example, create bounded over here, then you have to set an upper limit. Let's say you want to have one message in the queue at a time. Now I do have to use the bounded channel options over here. So I have to do this. In fact, let's see what this method accepts. It accepts a new bounded channel options. The capacity can be one. So one message can be there at a time. Then deal with the full mode, meaning that if the channel is full, what are you supposed to do? And you have a few options. You can wait. So if the channel is full and I say write something, then I will wait here. The code will not continue until I can write to the channel. Then I can write, but drop the newest item in the channel, whichever was added last. Then drop oldest means you write or remove and ignore the oldest item in the channel. And then drop write means you just don't write into it. So let's just quickly demo this. If I just say wait over here, let's just set a few other things like single writer, true, and allow synchronous processing, false. Let's do all of that. Why do you not 
like me using you. Oh, it also has one parameter. What's the parameter? The parameter is capacity, which I also passed down here, which is a bit annoying. So let's just remove the capacity and just do this. So if I do that, and just for the demo, increase this to three seconds, so I have time to write more, then I want you to see what's happening. If I press the first send, it's going to happen immediately, and then the processing starts. But when I press the second send, it's going to wait until the first one is processed before I can write. So quick, quick ones, response, response, waiting. See how it took some time? Waiting. Waiting. And the reason why it's not three seconds is because it's already been picked up and it has started being processed. So that's why this all happens. And you can see the processing happening. If this was configured to say, I don't know, drop right, then if I did the exact same thing and I said, right, I don't know, let's push five things, one, two, three, four, five, and I go back here, you're going to see that only this and maybe another one was added, but the other three were just dropped because the channel was full. So even though I pushed, I configured drop the right, don't write it, and you don't have to write it. And the same thing, drop newest, drop oldest, same mindset, same logic. And there's way, way more things you can do with channels and build some really cool stuff. I just want to keep this as an introduction to channels. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you want to know more about channels and you like this video, leave a comment down below letting me know you want to see more of them. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.